Alrighty, welcome back to the jungle. We're we'll gonna be playing Lilia versus Nocturne. Who kills those funny camps the best? Personally, I'd give it to myself. Me personally, I love killing these funny camps. Nobody right clicks them like I do. Nobody wants to see those health bars go down like I do. For the runes, we're running Conqueror, Triumph, um, Legend Tenacity, Last Stand. A whole lot of skirmishing with uh, this sort of rune setup. You can go Dark Harvest as well as on Lilia. In this case, we're very much playing for the team fight. The skirmishes. Skirmishes being fights with more than one person. Lilia does not excel in the 1v1. Nocturne does. We just won't fight him in the 1v1. That's fine. And then a lot of the dynamic of this matchup is whoever clears the camps fastest. So, whoever does that generally has control over things. And with Lilia, anytime you get any juice, you're going to start clearing a whole lot faster. That's the reason we're running the blue smite as well as we head into the mid game. You get more movement speed when you finish a camp, as well as more movement speed through bushes. Gives us a lot more mobility around the map. And then for the secondary runes, magical footwear and cosmic insight. Cosmic insight gives you that flash engage with Lilia, but it also gives you more smites. More spite, more smite plays into your clear speed, as well as just your ability to contest things. You'll have smite up for objectives. You'll also have smite up for if the enemy's trying to invade you, which can be a problem sometimes. Alrighty, so then for the jungle path with Lilia, we start on those raptors so that we can get more XP over time. We also skip that red buff for the same reason. We do the raptors, we do the golems. Next time we come back to those bad boys, they'll be respawned faster so we can do them again faster. So that we get more XP faster. So that we get to level 6 faster. So that we get to level 9 faster. Etc, etc. You just keep running that rotation. Getting more camps than the enemy jungler. And you're probably going to get ahead that way. With this particular jungle path too, it will allow us to reset and then come back to the top side and be in position to contest the crud or the void grubs coming up. Mr. Nocturne, you skipped your your Krugs. You're too slow. So we'll just continue our clear here. <laughs> the big man's wasting so much time. Nice, we're gonna be able to double scuttle. Double scuttle and then return right back to our raptors. Let's save our W. Use it on this. Auto Q. We also put that two points into the Q to increase that clear speed. A point in the E is just if you're fighting. Let's Q and then bring it around town here. And maybe it's just too safe, it's fine. Go ahead and Q these minions and get to this bot side scuttle. E. Damn, if I land that? Yeah, Zed can actually get her egg with the shadow. I'm fine, big man. Q. Put a ward right here for the Nocturne. Use that smite, and since we started the raptors, Bob, around four minutes, those bad boys are going to respawn, so it's right back to them. We do the raptors, we do the krugs, we get level five, we reset to the void grubs that are coming up in 40 seconds. All the meanwhile, that time that Nocturne wasted topside, he's really going to be feeling it. And it also puts us in a position where, like, we don't have to fight without items. Lilia is a bruiser champion, so you need the two par. You need the damage, and you need the ability to take some damage. So before you have items, you're just less effective at doing all of that. There goes my solo lanes, but it's okay. It's okay. Nocturne still hasn't reset. Q, auto. Pull these bad boys together. W, recall. Oh. That last golem. He's doing his own thing. Maybe he skips class. Maybe he doesn't have friends. Hard to say. Blasting one. Amp tome to the top side. Just a whole bunch of AP right there. 65 AP. And then we're building into Leandris as our first item easily. Leandris gives us that percentage HP, percentage max HP magic damage burn, which is really going to help us against Garen, Nocturne, Anivia, even Senna. She gets tanky sometimes. The Void Grubs are up. Uh, Nocturne is who knows where. He's probably reset to his bot side. He has 25 CS. So we'll start these bad boys right off the bat. You can throw the E over the wall. That will pull them into us and also clump them up. You want to clump them up together so that you can hit them all with the Q and the W. And then you want to focus one down, one by one. We see Nocturne right there, so that's really good for me. And now it's pretty simple. With the Void Grubs too, the main benefit for us personally is the XP that they give us. They act as another camp, getting us close for level 6. And they give, us, give our allies that buff where they deal more damage to turrets. Now since we saw Nocturne on the bot side here... 33 CS. Pretty confident to invade his raptors. If we get the raptors, we get the golems. We're level 6. We're good to go. We could even kill him in a 1v1. We just have a Garen top with two kills problem, but... We'll see what we can do. Got those raptors. 
Mr. Nocturne. There goes my top laner. He trades the dragon. That's okay. That's all right. And now with my top laner dead, there's no onus for me to make a successful play. The soul lane's feeding L, but we don't have to pay the price. If I try to attack that Garen, instead of doing my camps, for example, then I pay the price. L. No ward in that bush. Eh, he's staying too long. Trundle's coming. We have our ulti. Let's go. Let's do this. You want to hug the wall? Moving. And... Q. Moving. E. Auto. Moving. Auto. Moving. W. Auto. Q. Nice. We're rich, baby. Hell yeah. Now we can stay on the map for quite some time. 1700 for the full Leandres. If I do a full clear, I wonder if I have it. you think I would know the math by now, but... You know me. So as we clear these camps, we don't get as much juice as you would like. But what it does is respawn them. And then once they respawn again, they'll be higher level. And that's where the real juice comes. So we'll clear these camps, clear all of them, and then reset with as much gold and XP as we can have, get back on the map, and then look for a play. Let's just smite that bad boy. Big points that you're playing for as Lily is that level 6, first ulti, level 9, Q max, and then level 11, second ulti, and then level 13. With that Q max, it's the most important one, giving you your damage and your clear speed. Hmm. That is into mid lane, but it looks like he flashes away there if you look at the turret. Alrighty, so Nebbia is going to crash that wave. That's okay. More gold for me. Z02 and Bob, since we're farming so hard, like, it's fine. Bop, bop. No, I messed these up. Q. Man, and I got a Leandris. Yeah, we got it. Let's reset. Reset, do my golems, red buff, and then, Bob, and then, John will, will interrupt the full clear just for a brief moment to try to kill some bad guys. Next item I'm looking for, ideally, would be Boots Lucidity, giving me a lot of ability haste. Boots Lucidity comboed with a Riftmaker gives you quite a bit of ability haste as well as fighting power. Hmm. I'd be giving up like Merc Treads, that's what I'm seeing. And that's fine. Ninja Tabby. Oh my god, giving up Ninja Tabby is kind of an issue. But if I get to Zonia's, it's fine. Because Ninja Tabby on Lilia, you know, you're kiting out a lot. So you can't utilize the armor and the reduced on hit effects as much as other champions. That's where the Zonia's really comes into play. That's yeah, where the champion's pretty mid-range like that. For better or for worse. I kind of like it. I kind of like how she's balanced this season. Very strong at the point she's supposed to be. And actually killable at other points. Let's uh, hit this real quick. So we're strong, Bob. Leandri's level 7. Very close to level 8. Now we enter the river and this gives me option to attack mid or attack bot lane. So we'll see. Sin is pushed up. Easy flank. Easy flank. Bring it around town. Bring it all the way around town. Get the movement speed and let's do this, boys. Oh god, I might be screwed. E, Q, moving. Auto. Nice, we're not screwed. Q, let's follow this guy, he has no flash. W, auto, auto, Q. Nice, it's one noob down. We're not letting him get away. Sinan knows. Surely she knows to turn. E right there, just in case. There we go. Nice, we got some kills. Help Varus push this bad boy out, and then we'll reset right back to the top side there. Now we've lost some tempo on the top side. Nocturne killed my Zed, and they're probably on those Void Grubs. Yeah, they already got two, but we're going to get our blue side. Boots of Lucidity. Amp Tome to the top side. With that dragon coming up, I'll be able to clean up whatever's left of my camps on the top side. Head on to the bot side. Nocturne. Figured out the Axiom Arc build as well. Intelligent guy right there. <laughs> so once we get the Rift Maker, that will make us quite a bit tankier. But we got Leandri's 90 ability power. Very nice. Um, 300 HP. And then the percentage HP, max health, burn. Which really helps us against those tankier targets at all stages of the game. And then also gives us that stacking percentage damage increase as we're in combat. With Lilia, as you attack the bad guy, with your ability, you're going to apply your damage over time burn. So you're going to stay in combat and be able to utilize that. The percentage damage amp, just like Conquer, where you get the healing 
the percentage healing when fully stacked. Lily is supposed to be hitting multiple people, so you really get the most value when you're hitting three or more people. In your healing, in the percentage damage, amp, etc, etc. Alrighty, we got level 9. That was our first spike, remember? But now, we have the daunting task to play with our team. Oh boy. I mean, no, there's an Anivia. Close, close, close. Big arrow. We're going to QW. Nice. Smite. Q. Auto. Nice. Now we got an Anivia right here. E. Close. Alrighty, she's kiting. Let's finish that dragon. They played that pretty bad. Since they started the dragon themselves, Nocturne with this Axiom Arc build needs, you know, his team to do some stuff. When he was that far up, it becomes pretty easy to counterattack, and that's all we had to do. Damn, I wish that wasn't warded. I'm gonna try to get the Gromp. Get the Gromp and get on out of here. Hello, ulti. Phew, I need better flash, man. Stupid. Moving. Oh. E. Take that. Ash, let's see some action. Let's see some sh movement. We applied the slow. I'll get my slow. We'll help each other out. Anivia, get off her asshole. Q. Auto. Are you guys stupid? Question mark. Run. Well, damn, we got close to killing Anivia. Oh, come on, check this out. E, right there. Let's get lucky, come on. Yes! Got your eggs, stupid asshole. Boom. <laughs> you know, and the ADC too. This is control warded. If you hit the turret, you're dead, big man. Senna's behind him. Hmm. Okay, you're not dead. Shorty. Moving. Well, let's reset. I'm kind of wasting time. Back to the top side. Fiendish Codex, Ruby Crystal. We have time to kill, man. I guess I'll just wait for this amp tone. My top side is compromised with four kill Garen going in there. So I'm waiting. Blue Trinket and eventually the amp tome. I value the Fiendish Codex more than the Haunting Guys. The Haunting Guys is super popular, but... 10% Ability Haste is so much more useful at this stage of the game. It increases your clear speed and gives you more playmaking potential because you'll have more ultis. So we're level 9. As we continue to clear our camps here, we clear them much faster now. And that gives us a lot more time to fight. So we want more ultis. And then if we win these fights, then we get the XP that we're looking for to really juice us. And then if we get that level 11, second point in our ulti, we're really, really juiced. So that's what we're playing for. So we can start doing this sort of rotation in which we do two camps on one side and then fight for an objective like this. Shouldn't use my smite, shit. Okay, I've seen like one shot Rift Herald, I've never seen it. It's always me soloing that bad boy for 50 minutes. For all the like arguments of, man I wish League had voice comms, like I wish they did just for Rift Herald. Like when I'm hitting Rift Herald, I could tune in with the voice and be like, HELP! <laughs> and then, and then there's no more voice chat for the rest of the game. Alright, Bob, we got the Rift Herald. That's some XP right there. We're doing our camps. Look at how close I am to level 11. LOL. Enemy spotted. Now, Nocturne's gonna be looking for Ash. He's gonna be looking for an easy target, like Ash or the Varus. So if we're in position here, then E. Right behind them? In the Fog of War? That's the place to be. See, he's looking. Let's get these Krugs, get level 11, and then babysit the bot lane. Level 11! Cooldown on our ulti goes down to 104. And then 2.25. Ah, wait on them. Don't show is Lilia here. Don't show, don't show. Move forward. My bot lane is really asking to die to Nocturne. And then our bonus damage is 150 on the ulti. Gotcha. I want to hold my ulti in case Nocturne ults. But I will still stay bot lane here for a little bit. Drop the Rift Herald right on top of the ADC. He's going mid. That's fine. Push. 
Let me take a ride. Yeah, it's still like glitches in the game, huh? Boom! E, right there. Ulti. Q, auto, smite. Gotcha. That was so easy. We'll just keep pushing for a little bit here. The Anivia is dead, so there's no one to wave clear. Ball of our AP. We hit this turret kind of hard. 105, 105, 105. Let's get out of here. <laughs> nice TP. E, moving. Bong. Whenever you collide the E with the terrain, it gives you like a guaranteed like AoE. Nice, Bob. We're doing it. Rift Maker and then right into that Zonia's. Whatever components I can get. Now that dragon is up, but I don't have ulti for one minute, so we actually don't have to go to it. It's a key mistake a lot of people make. Dragon's up and walking to it. I'm good, man. I'm good. If they get that dragon, it's not the end of the world. It's not even that important. It's one to one on the dragons. So we'll clear our camps. Now it'd be extra beast if I could get into Nocturne's red side, but with the Garen problem, you never know. Oh. Probably just gank Mr. Garen here, just like last time. Waiting for Trundle to get up here. Building up my passive on the camp, though. And... E. Q. Don't trade autos with that guy. Q. W. Q. I told you not to trade autos. E. Q. Nice. Uh. Just a couple grillion Qs and that guy can actually die. Let's do the Gromp. Smite that bad boy. Let it die to the burns. <laughs> And then we'll go into Nocturne's red side, rinse that shit, and then see if they attack mid. They are so likely to attack my team mid. But being in their red side, I have the flank position. No camps. Wow, there's no Krugs either. Man, I like to throw an E over the wall. E, Q, auto, W, auto, Q. Okay. Not gonna ulti if we don't have to. And Nivea's top. They're stupid. Take this turret. Another professional jungler move right here. I will auto attack the turret. They've never seen it before. Schmack. Schmack. Run. Oh, jeez. I'm dead. I'm dead. E, U, ulti. Gosh. Once that, once that Hui ulti hits, I'm screwed, man. Shutdown goes to Nocturne, but his build sucks, so it's fine. He went Ninja Tabby, and then he's going into Death Dance. Okay. Oh, what a hard decision right here. I can go the, the Seeker's Arm Guard, which makes me invulnerable, or I can get the Needlessly, which gives me a ton of damage. <clears throat> ton of damage. Invulnerability. Ton of damage. Aww. Aww. Survive a Garen ulti. Give me the ton of damage, okay? Close. Oh! Oh, I thought the E hit him. Yes, dance completed. Okay, Nocturne. He had the first item right, but damn, did he go wrong with it. Look at that, Bob. I walked away from that wolf with 700 HP, and it dies to the burn. Holy shit. Auto, and then E, auto. Walk away? I don't think that one's dying. Well, Nocturne, I just got seven camps right here. What are you doing? With your death stance. E, moving. Q, close. Just kidding. Okay, can't really follow up on that. Onto my allies here. Uh -huh. 
pretty stupid dive by Zed, but... If I hit one of them, they're screwed. E. Whoa! Not in Nivia. Don't want to be in lane against that guy. E, Q, moving. Whoa, this guy's out of his mind. W. Q. Okay. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, what the fuck? Really? So no? I like, if they're focusing me that hard, you would think they would die? Nope. Okay. A Nocturne walked at me. He didn't take an auto attack? Okay. Guess that's that death dance, huh? Oh, but this guy dies. You can auto-attack him just fine. Nocturne ulting Trundle and killing him. Well, let's farm some camps. 180 CS to 120, and that just keeps getting worse. I can kill all my camps probably before this dragon spawns and then just cross from my blue side into the dragon. That's the tempo advantage I'm kind of talking about with Lilia. You just clear so, 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 so. Normally fast. It's balanced. The real problem is whenever you skip the camps for no reason and don't stay on the on the rails of doing the camps into the play. Champion builds up um, builds up that movement speed as you're doing the camps, but not if you stop hitting the camps. I'm gonna use the smite on these upgraded buffs. They take you a little bit longer. Nice one. So dead. E. Q. Auto. W. Q. E. Oh shit, sorry. Q, ulti. Q. Did this guy take damage? Q. 300. Like, I'm hitting them with 420 true damage, like, per Q. That's so good. The Riftmaker plus the Leandres is so, so juiced. I'm giving you both tanky and both damage. But you need to get it early game. They're very much mid-game items. If you don't get them fast enough, they suck. But when you get them at the right place at the right time... Oh, I guess we win! Well played. What the fuck, Trundle? Two and six Trundle, well played, man. Holy shit. His hole breaker dealt 4k damage to structures. Okay. GG. GG, Mr. Nocturne. It was competitive until he built that those nothing items and stopped farming. Alrighty, let's see it. Final damage dealt. 22k. 14? My bad. I thought I was juiced. I did do a lot of farming. Look at the gold difference. Uh, we had 11,000, Nocturne had 10,000. I thought I was carrying. Damage taken, 30,000. Yep, that's pretty good. CC score 20. Now, since the game ended in the mid game there, like you really start popping off mid game to late game, that's when the CC score would really go up when you get the five, five men ulti, things like that. But yeah, that's Lilia. Ramp, get ahead of the enemy, and keep pushing it. It's the same rotations as the early game, it's simple. Alrighty, hope you enjoyed. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Let me know which champion you want to see in the next video. Peace. Bye-bye. Alrighty, welcome back to the jungle. I'm going to be killing these raptors with Lilia, and then I'm going to be leaving the game. Unless. Unless. This guy gives me a fist bump. How about it? So no fist bump? I mean, Ziggs is a cool guy. He'll probably get me later. We're into Kane. You know, Kane is a classic counter to Lilia, but I honestly feel like she kind of has the edge just in modern jungle because with the addition of Void Grubs and then just the pace of the game, it feels like that there's way more skirmish opportunities for her. What Lilia has as an advantage is that she clears very fast. So she clears, she powers up, and then she's still in position to fight and fights well, regardless of levels, regardless of items, and can push the pace of the game like that when the enemy reciprocates and tries to match her at all stages, they usually don't have the tempo to compete, so then you can gain advantages in a very abusive way like that. So that's what we'll be trying to do. Step one, clear the camps. 
Cute smite. Alrighty, into our blue side. So I start the Raptors, we could do a double full clear and then just try for the Void Grubs on the spawn. And then be in good position from there. Now, so the Kane is smart, he's probably invaded my blue side, but we'll see. The runes, we have Conqueror, Overheal, Alacrity, and Coop. Let's just deal damage and take damage with that Overheal. It really starts applying once, uh, once we start fighting. And then once we get a little bit ramped, we'll be clearing the camps fast enough where they won't really be dealing damage to us. And then we'll have that shield going into fights. That's where it's really useful. Um, and then Magical Footwear and Cosmic, just save 300 gold, have more, have more smite, and have more uh, flash in. If the enemy was to invade us, like on our 3 camp or something like that, then you'll have your smite up for your camp as well. So, you can either use that smite offensively or defensively, having it up more often with the Cosmic Insight. Go ahead and Q smite this bad boy. And into the bot lane here, these guys are way too far up. Already dead? I'll just do my scuttle crab, man. Because Nico's not going to stick around in the fight, that's for sure. The faster we get done with Scuttle, the faster we gank mid, the faster we get back to our respawned raptors. This is why we keep the warding trinket, put that bad boy right on Kane's raptors. Hello. E. Moving. Q. Auto. 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 Flash. Q. Sir. Now I'm pretty chunked, so... Just gonna go ahead and get out of here. Get my reset off because Kane's not gonna be staying for my Raptors, so we know that we don't have to compete there. And then we can get back on the map with more items: Dark Seal, Amptome, Ruby Crystal, and a Control Ward. Let's wait for a little bit of HP and then back out there. So now we have the rotation: 30 seconds on Void Grubs. We can do the Raptors and then start those Void Grubs. Lilia has the E to pull the Void Grubs towards you, so even though he has this. Uh, scuttle crab to give vision. We'll be able to do those without him seeing us on the mini map. If they move their camera, then yeah, they'll see us, but hopefully they don't. And even if they do, Kane started bot side, so he'd have to skip camps to come contest us. As you're finishing the camp, always try to pull it towards the next one so that you don't waste any time. Put our control word down right there. Alrighty, perfect timing. I kind of messed that up. Pull them together, and off we go! Doesn't really matter which one we hit here. Nice, Kane is ganking bot as well. That means I'm going to have a lot of time up here to myself. His blue side camps will be up soon enough, if not already. Two smite. Finish this bad boy up. That gives us level 5 super quick. We haven't really found our skirmish yet, but... We're definitely doing very good on farm, 38 to 35. And now we're going to have this blue side as well. My team's pinging for ganks and shit. It's like, nah, my two camps first here. These two camps and one more will give me level 6. And then we're really talking. These sort of plays too, like turret dies, are just not really Lilia's juice. Do. Alrighty, here I am. All you, man. E. U, W. Bomb. Not too bad. Not going to be able to get his Gromp, though. There's no reason to go back into his jungle. Since I got the kill XP on Riven, though, that's like basically the same amount as a camp. So I'm going to do the Scuttle Crab, hit level 6, and then we can look for a gank afterwards. Or even cross through mid, because the Golems is a bit of a detour. Whereas the Kane may be doing my blue side camps, or the Dragon trying to counter me, getting all that XP on the top side. Let's cross through mid here and see what we find. Nice, level 5 Kane. Don't mind if I do. Zix has the flank. Nice, I'll just do the dragon. My smite's up. This is why you run Cosmic Inside, Bob. You always have action. Okay. Auto. Auto Q. Smite. Uh, just a little bit too... A little bit not enough. W. Q. Might be able to win this. Moving. EQ. Yeah, not enough. There's just way too many people, Bob. I didn't know my Ziggs was 0 and 3. I didn't know there's so many people. Thought it was going good. Whatever. Sucks that we missed that smite on the dragon. I overestimated the amount of damage I would deal. Let's wait for the haunting guys, and then we'll just kind of rinse and repeat here. With two minutes on the Void Grubs coming up, I mean, I really don't have an option with my jungle path. I have to assume that Kane took 
these blue side camps since we're even in CS. So we'll clear our red side and we got like one minute on the void grubs. Two. The blasting one, the haunting guys, gives us more clear speed, more ability power. The haunting guys as well. 35 AP, 200 HP. For each second in combat, deal 2% bonus damage, um, up to 6%. With Lily, you basically always stay in combat because of the the damage over time that you deal. Whenever you hit anyone with the abilities, then you deal percentage max HP magic damage over time. And then that's going to keep you in combat, and all that damage is going to get amped as you go with the haunting guys. Looking to complete that Leandre is easily the best first item for Lilia. Giving us a good mix of damage and HP. Nice. The Kane's only level 6. We are going to start over-leveling him. Over-leveling him soon enough here. Clean up whatever camps are here. Wait for our ulti to come back up. And then we'll be in a good spot. It's hard to push the pace of the game with a bad mid laner. That's for sure. 0 and 3 really slows things down. Keep maxing the Q. That's going to be our damage and our clear speed. Hmm, I think I can get involved with this. That's Nico's ulti and a lot of Ezreal's abilities, so sure he's ramped up, but I think we're good here. Flash Q, auto, auto. Nice. Go ahead and push the wave too. We got 15 on the Void Grub, so we're going to be late to those. If we push this fast enough, then we get the wave crashed. Ooh. This guy wants to hold it, that's also fine. Honestly, we'll just keep farming. I have to assume that the cane is on the top side and taking those void grubs. So what I can try to do as a counter is get into his red side. Maybe even repeat gank um, the bot lane. Ah, there's no raptors. Kane, you got any golems for me? No golems. Okay. This guy is pretty far past the wave, but... Still not an easy position for me to play from. I'm gonna use our Q to get in range here. Nice. Don't even have to ulti this guy. Q, auto, W. <laughs> this guy's dead inevitably. Inevitably dead. Q. <laughs> and the cannon minion. Nice, a perfect play. And the turret plate. Nice, I'm rich. W recall. We'll max that W second. Okay, so you get the Void Grub's top, Mr. Kane, but classically, I kill your bot lane. Deal? Leandri's, um, damn, they have so much mixed damage. I guess I'll do Boots Lucidity, and then we can go another HP and AP item here, or we could just do, honestly, like Rift, Rift Maker is going to be my best bet. Let's do a Fiendish Codex that's a bit more offensive now. And then let's get back out there. So, Leandri's 90 ability power, 300 HP. Just as flat, st flat stats, that's everything you want as Lilia in the in the early stages of the game. And then, dam dealing damage abilities causing me to burn for 2% 2, 2 max health magic damage over um, 3 seconds. And then that burn keeps applying with your passive. So, that's just so much extra damage. And you still have that stacking damage aspect as well. The Leandre Burn also applies to the camp, so you can start walking away from them a lot sooner. So we'll clean up our camps and be on the bot side here in position to fight for the dragon. It's definitely going to be harder where they just have winning lanes. It's as simple as that. So we'll let the enemy attack first since they have winning lanes and then be in position to try to counter rather than starting anything. Nice, this isn't warded. You guys are pushed. E. Q. Ulti. I'm fine with ulting just Ezreal, where he's so strong. Try to... Q. Classic. Classic. Just walk at the bot lane. They have to die. You know, I said the Ezreal's strong, but he's 1 in 4. Now we have okay position on the dragon here. It's up to Kane to try to steal. Q. With Leandre's Bob, you even do the dragon faster. It's pretty beast. Keep you smite. 
I'm missing that one. Let's go Ziggs. I guess I'll defend the mid-wave. This is not how I wanted to spend my afternoon. Cleaning up my mid laner's mess. Alrighty, I ain't got all day. It's time to reset. Get my component item and get back out there. Haunting guys into the top side. You may be thinking to upgrade the Magi's. I don't think so. I think eventually I have to die. I got a losing team. And if I go Magi's, I delay my item. I give them a bigger win for getting a random kill on me, which inevitably has to happen. Because this Lilia, whenever you go in, you're pretty committed. Sure, she, sure you have the in and out, but you have to spend your HP, and if it doesn't go your way, you're dead. And to lose the Magi stacks for that and not have better items right here, right now, nah, I'm good. Because now I just need a little bit of gold for, like 600 gold for that Riftmaker completion, and that's a big, big spike for me. Pretty simple rotation here, cleared towards the bot side, and if I kill them this time, we could probably take the whole turret. We're going into 14 minutes, and that means that the turret plates are going to go down, making it a lot easier to take the turret. With Leandri's and the Ability Haste from the Boost Lucidity and the Fiendish Codex, I'm clearing so fast. You have to think of, like, Ability Haste as DPS for Lilia, because all your damage is packed into the Q. Damn, you really died, huh? Q moving. Oh, Q? I'm fine. I just don't want to take the fight into Kane. It's up to them to keep reaching into me. Whoa! Not a Vel'Koz. Whoa! These guys keep surprising me. Okay, let's reset. Let's not reset. I need a hundred gold. Here's where Kane counters Lilia. He gets to ulti my ulti. E. Damn, good flash. Boom. Nice, I got the assist. That means I got 100 gold, Bob. That means I got the Riftmaker, baby. Riftmaker's pretty similar to Leandri's. It just doesn't give you a burn. Very good second item for Lilia, just based off the stats. 80 ability power, 350 HP, 15 ability haste. With the passive for each second in combat, deal 2% bonus damage up to 10. Unlike Leandri's only giving you 6 and then gain 10% Omni Vamp when fully stacked. So 10% Omni Vamp is going to be like doubling our Conqueror healing, which in extended fights is going to be very useful. And Riftmaker gives us that extra HP, as well as extra ability haste to make the fights more extended. I don't really like how this is starting. This guy has Blast Gun to get away. I'm not really looking for the Rift Herald here. I was looking for some sort of start of a skirmish, but I'm just not seeing it. Get my movement speed. Keep building up that movement speed. Nice. Q. W. Q. Ooh. He's just dead, Bob. Riven? Haven't seen her. Nah, me personally? Nah, I'm just running through the mid lane. Yeah, I'll call you later. I'm running through the mid lane. Reception's not too good here. Give me these red side camps. Nice. That's what I'm talking about with Lilia's tempo advantage. Not only do you have tempo in the macro, but you also have tempo in the micro. Like you just have so much movement. For each like moving moving, like they have one they have one turn. You know what I mean. Alright, pushing and give me this damn turret. Me take it all. Me take the camps. Me take the wave. Me take the turret. Me so good. Whatever the fuck my team's doing, we do not care. Right, back to my camps. Ezreal, I dare you to try to siege mid. I dare you. That would make my day, man. Alrighty, he's pushing. Off we go, Mr. Ezreal. Sweeper and just walk right into him. They don't teach you this move. Q. E. Shows that he's going that way, so that helps. Never gonna deal enough damage to us. Q. Ulti. W. Oh. That was a good E by him. Welp. 
I got the dragon coming up and I did spin my ulti. I've seen better positions. Hundred and fifty five CS to hundred and twenty of canes. He has not been farming well at all. It's the quintessential part of this matchup. Both of us need to farm fast and fight fast and go to the next thing fast. Looks like they're trying to trade for the Rift Herald, which is fine by me. I'll just clean up my camps and reset them. Once my ulti's up, I'm back on the map with better items. And I'm in a very good spot. Now I can choose to do like one of two things here. I think Death Cap or Azonias. Zonias would help me against like Riv and Kane, but they're both pretty weak. So with Death Cap, that gives me like the holy shit sort of damage. And we're pretty ramped up, so I think we ought to go for that. I mean, 9, 1, and 2. It doesn't get much better than that. Let's try for the Death Cap, Bob. With Lilia, your extra movement speed and like again, that shebang damage. Because Damage on the Q converts to true damage. Movement speed is based off a of percentage. Like, the more massive amounts of AP, the more augmented you become. And basically one of the only ways to get that is through that full death cap. The Zonias and Banshees give 120 AP now too. That helps, but they really are like this mid-range item. We'll clean up our camps here. I'm not looking for anything preemptive. I still want my gold and I still want my XP. I want both. Nice, the engage is mitigated. What the fuck is this? What the fuck is that? Okay. Yon using every key he's got. Why he could possibly be upset, you got me. But one thing's for sure, he's in, he's in poopy pants mode, so I gotta defend this top turret. At the end of the day, it's not too bad. That's more gold for me. As we're entering the mid game too, this will give me just fine XP, so it's not like I'm losing anything. Okay. And I want to push out the next wave too, so that I'm not wasting too much time. I got two minutes on dragon. I could farm, but I swear if I go to farm, then they die right here. And it's fine if they die, it's just like I want to be involved in the fight. I can get super juiced and get that whole death cap. Shut down, damn. Dude, my team is doing a whole lot of nothing right here. I'm gonna build up my movement speed. Honestly, if I just keep farming, then I have the death cap, so we might as well do that. There's like nothing consistent to play around that mid lane. They succumb to Nico gank for like the 50th time, which is whatever. Because I got death cap, baby. Don't FF just yet. So with death cap, we go to 539 ability power. Nice, they're attacking Yon. If they're attacking Yon, that means they don't have time to do Baron, which is really good for us. Now we're looking to carry these mid-game team fights for all of our farming. That's good and all, but we did it all to get to this point in the mid-game in which we're very strong. And now it's really about if we win these fights or not. Phew. Look at that fucking damage. Phew. Moving.
900 on my W. Damn. My Q is dealing like 600 on like a 2.3 cooldown. Okay. Yeah, clear that ward for me. Alrighty. Now, you guys need to stand right there, not on top of me. If I can get this flank position, I have better position for my ease. Bang, right onto Velkaz. Bang. Good damage. Hold up my Q right here. Wish I had any damn allies. What's the deal? I don't have any soul lanes in this fight, huh? And they're obviously looking for Nico engaged, so we need to be wary of the flanks. It's not about the dragon right here. It's about winning the fight. We can't do either, huh? Q, W. I think we're fine. We're not fine, damn. Nico ulti into Ezreal ulti into Velkaz ulti into Kane everything. Ay, 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 ay. What am I so doing? What am I so doing? There's gonna be a comment saying, well, your soulings were pushing, so you should respect it, eh? Okay. Yeah, yeah you're right. Yep. Well, shit. We need to win the mid-game fights, Bob. And if nobody participates in the mid-game fights, Bob, then I'm kind of screwed, Bob. I think Zonius will be my next item. That's the only, like, defense I have against Nico's engage. Because all of it happens suddenly. I, I can dodge so much damage with that. There's not another item that even comes close to competing with it. You may think, like, Banshees, like, have the magic resist. Nah, we need to just simply dodge all the abilities. What the fuck is my team doing, Bob? Listen, I know they're all losing, but come on. <laughs> come the fuck on. No, Kane, rinse my jungle. Oh, it's so screwed up. We can win through team fighting. I just need my, uh, I need my team. Not even Krugs left for me. Damn. Okay, into the bush. Of course it's warded. Like, what the fuck? So no fun allowed, huh? Nice. Nice. Deal so much damage once I hit them. Bob, let's just wait on top of my carries. That seems to be like where I could actually get something done. Seemingly. Look at that fucking damage. Nice. Alrighty, well that's the Nico down. It's gonna be one of our only opportunities to take this mid turret. Although they do have Velkaz and Ezreal here for the wave clear. Might as well try. Smack you. Christ that damage. Back to my blue side. Looks like the Kane's not trying to invade, so we're good there. Yes, do something useful. Okay, the Kane's dead. Bob, we have a Baron angle. Their Ezreal and Riven are down there. Now, we don't have a tank, so that makes things harder. But it's our, it's going to be one of our only chances here. The Velkaz knows that, so he's coming to poke. But damn. Let's try it. Jin is one of the worst, worst champions at doing Baron as well. Amazing. Jana has already wasted her ulti. Amazing. Alright, you, you boys aren't making this easy now, are you? Uh-huh. Run. Run. I don't know what the hell Janna was doing. 
because she moved into them. If you move into them, you're just going to take damage from the Shadow Flame, Horizon Focus, Stopwatch, 25 Magi Stack Velkos. At least I got my Seeker's Arm Guard. Okay. Shame, I could be winning this game. If everyone wasn't so fucking poopy pants. Oh, that's right, I can't stand on the wave. They have Nika moving. So what am I doing? Nothing, Bob. I'm defensively behind my ally as I'm waiting for them to be engaged on, basically. That's it. Because if I'm in front, then I lose. Have to stay mid lane. If Jin goes bot, then they can Baron too easily. Who up doing nothing in League of Legends because their allies are poopy pants, huh? Living a dream. Trying to land the E off the turret where it was. Because if the person's close enough to that, then you'll hit them as well. If I land that ulti onto Ezreal, then probably can go in. Close. I got level 16, it's just nothing's happening. So like legit until something happens, there's nothing to say. So I'm like commentary is over. I'm just gonna play. I have to play this like a fucking stream match, huh? Well played. Final damage dealt, 18,000. Damage taken, 32. See ya.